Thank you, Matt. So, I'm just going to say, first of all, I'm very nervous, so keep that in mind when I speak. Um, so, let me ask you a question. My name is Marisela Guzman, but let me ask you a question. Who understands war here? I do. Raise your hands if you understand war. Who understands war? Who has been in a war before in this in this space? Who has had a friend be killed by a drive-by? Raise your hand. Who has had a parent who was undocumented and had to deal with the police? Raise your hand. Who has had ever been harassed by the police? Raise your hand. Then you know what? You understand war. Because we have this misconception. I'm a veteran. I served in 2002, I mean 1998 to 2002. Never served in combat, but I can tell you what, I know what war is. You see, I grew up in South Central LA. My parents came to this country undocumented from Mexico, and they were illegal. Well, that's, I like saying undocumented, but they were considered illegals. Excuse my language, they were considered spits. And they worked hard. And they were harassed by the police until 1987 when they became residents. They understood war. My brothers, who were harassed by the police because they were people of color, understand war. My friends, my friend Evelyn, at the age of 13, was killed in front of her school. She understands war. Being from South Central LA, when my city burned down, and we were actually under, we were, we were actually uh, taking care of the reserves, and we were basically told, you can't leave your house. The people of South Central understand war. And that's why it's so important to understand that wars do not happen in Iraq and Afghanistan. Wars happen in our backyards. Wars happen in South America and Central America. Because all of us are connected by many bonds. But when we talk about the language of war, we all understand war. We have a problem happening right now. They have been telling us the economic problems that we have to sacrifice things. Can you hand out your mic? So, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. No, it's the, but the mic. This is the thing. What can you do? Today, you're here as a community trying to support such a great organization that supports a lot of people in South and Central America. But you're not just doing that, you're supporting me and Jesus who are going to Oregon. We come from different places and we're talking to the immigrant community about the wars in their communities. <laughs> war right now here. If you look at me, what do you see? Do you see as somebody who came from war? Do you see somebody who's actually is dealing with war right now? What people do not tell you, and people do not tell you about the military is that one of the things that I did, you know, I didn't go to war, but I dealt with war in the military. And it's one of the hardest things for me to speak out, but the way I speak out, the reason I speak about this is because I has, has been spoken out. <laughs> You see, I have this thing called PTSD. Who's heard of PTSD? Raise your hands. Raise your hand. Right? They tell us that PTSD for, is for combat veterans to go to war. But the reality is that right now in the military, about 30% of men and women are being raped in the service. I'm a rape survivor. And every night I go to sleep, I deal with war. You see, in this club, I was hanging out with Jesus in the back. And it's hard for me to interact with people because I'm afraid. I deal with PTSD and I'm going to war right now. And a friend of mine who became my mentor and helped me through my process, she was uh, from Argentina at the age of 17. She was captured in the 70s and was tortured for two years and a half. And she dealt with war. So that's why we have to make these interconnections again. I keep saying it over and over again. Make these interconnections from your backyard to what's happening in South, in South and Central America, what's happening to Iraq and Afghanistan, and what's happening to the Philippines. Because you know, as a community, we all understand war. So thank you.